Midnight Music. Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, we have closed the forbidden door for now. Now it is time to cash in up in the Great White North. And to do that, we brought some members of a club, not the club, but the Ringside Club is here with myself and Willie T to help discuss the mega weekend that is going on in Toronto for Money in the Bank and NXT Heat Wave. Sit back, relax, and well, you're kind of in a cookout situation right now. It is Kings of the Rings podcast episode number 382, the eighth Money for the Marks ever, exclusively here on Wrestle Addict Radio, and it starts right now. <laughs> Eight years of this. Eight, nine. I got a lot count after three. It's eight. It's eight. This is the eighth. This is my eighth year. We, you know, we celebrated on June team, kind of, sorta. So it's eighth year. Eighth year of my first ever episode, which was Money in the Bank and one night. So we'll get into all that. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number three hundred eighty-two. One of our seminal shows of the year, Money for Remarks, an episode made special. By yours truly, because this is the first episode I have ever been on. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. If you like what you're listening to or what you're seeing right now on what's ironically going to be our 4th of July edition episode, I think it's the first time we're ever going to do that when this goes, uh, when this, when we finish the editing and whatnot, uh, please like, share, subscribe, leave us five star reviews. Links to all of that are in the description below. With me today is a man who I dare would say is going to be part of a new club that's bringing that's coming up. Uh, although he did miss his tickets to MSG on SmackDown, he thought the law and the law won. Ladies and gentlemen, co-host of the Ringside Club, Chad Law. How are you? Gang, 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 ganger. <laughs> I'm here. Welcome, man, fellas. I'm happy to be here. You know what I'm saying? It's been a, it's been a little minute. You know what I mean? Since we're supposed to do this. You know, since we had you on our show, the Ringside Club. But fresh out of work. Live from the car phone, <laughs> right on the car pad. I was like, I ain't missing this episode. You know what I'm saying? We right here, right I now. Love, Ready to talk some graps and raps. Raps and raps. I love, I love live from the car pad. That's awesome. And ladies and gentlemen, pardon his fresh, sir. A good, close friend of mine that I've known for a very, very long time. Hint, hint, we used to go to school in a mansion. Bet you didn't know that. <laughs> and I think we grew up in the same town, just on different parts, different sides of that town. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, other co-host of the Ringside Club, my man DJ AO, Aaron Baker, AO, whatever you want to call him. He's here. He's got a great beard. How are you? Yeah, man. AO Baker here, Ringside Club representative. My man Rick knew me when all of this was up here that many, is... many moons ago. <laughs> and you barely had a lot up there either. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, man, appreciate uh appreciate the invite. It was uh, it was dope to have you on the uh on the Ringside Club a couple episodes back. So I'm happy to be here, man. It's gonna be a good nice good conversation. A lot happening in the world of wrestling. But yeah, man, I'm here. We're yeah. Ayo, hey, real real quick. Apparently Sir Charles Williams in the chat wants to know if you still have your MJ Moonwalkers on the Genesis. My man, the Genesis is actually in my living room closet. I need a converter to hook it up to my TV, but I do still have that. Sir <laughs> Charles, what up, family? Awesome. As with me, as always, each and every week. Will, you're you're kind of you're outnumbered now. You're, no one ever asked of... me about my MJ Moonwalkers because it was a video game. Yeah, I was gonna say I have no idea what they are. I, I was gonna guess. <laughs> I don't know why. I thought they were shoes, but on they the Genesis, on the Genesis should have given me a hint. But no. you know, context clues. Read, folks. Yeah, that that's see reading. We're talking about reading. Glenn Jacobs. Glenn Jacobs would have picked up the reference. Yes, he, I don't know if he would have picked it up. <laughs> you think? You think <laughs> little Kane could afford a Genesis? <laughs> Paul Bear was like, "Oh no, I came as violent." <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like I feel like Uncle Paul. He probably had a blockbuster rental card, you know, membership card. So I think, <laughs> you know, uh, right along with, with with Glenn Jacobs' library book list. What was on Glenn Jacobs' blockbuster rental list? Oh, definitely. Oh, uh, Jesus, I don't the know. Blue Brothers. I guess. And Good Burger, <laughs> especially Good <laughs> Good Burger. <laughs> <laughs> he probably watched True Lies a lot and was like, I can do that. Yeah, hey, I feel like he. I feel like he was definitely a, a Jamie Lee Curtis fan for some reason. Like yeah, was I was a Jamie a Lee Curtis Jamie fan Lee in the nineties. Did you see Jamie Lee Curtis in the nineties? Yeah, Jamie. She was yeah. everywhere. She yeah, was everywhere. she was. She was. 
Liza Dushku was also in True Lies as well, from Bring It On fame. She was the daughter. Anywho, this isn't a movie podcast. This is a wrestling podcast. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah really listen, good. listen, listen. Sometimes, sometimes you got to do it. We're getting there. We're getting there. Um, anywho, folks, welcome. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, this is apparently going to be our 4th of July edition, and we do have some special wrestling at a radio uh, global series USA 4th of July shirts. Uh, not 4th of July, but just uh, global series representing the United States of America. Those are on sale right now. On top of that, we did just celebrate Canada Day. Our Fred celebrated Canada Day, our Canadian uh, North American treasure. And we also have Canadian-inspired uh, shirts for Rust Side Radio. The links to all of that are in the description below. But Chad Law, A.O. Baker, you guys are here for the first time ever. Let's go. Yes, Will is very excited. It's the only go. thing. It's the only thing from his original, like, from his original rend- uh, version of the show that we're keeping. That's what I fucking <laughs> live for. <laughs> and, and I never, I never let you do it. Uh, but it is time, since you guys are here for the first time, and it's time for you guys to play the first Forget guest game. Yeah, let's so go. let's cue the intro, and then you're going to be on. So- on you. All right, the first question, the first guest came out. <laughs> a little name tag. <laughs> it, gets, <laughs> it gets better and better. You're welcome. Um, all right, so these are the seven, six, seven, however many questions we ask that every wrestling fan needs to have on deck, ready to answer. So we'll start with A.O. Baker, then Chad, you can hop in right in after. So the question, first question is, how did you get into this crazy grown man in tight circus that is known as professional wrestling? How did you come fan? Kindergarten, best friend's name was Ace, went to his house. He had Wrestle Buddies and VHS tapes. Wow, hell Wrestle yeah. History. Hell yeah. Perfect. Right, Chad. <laughs> Chad on you. <laughs> Me, I got into wrestling the year 2000, January to be precise, Royal Rumble, Cactus Jack, Triple H. That was like my first introduction to wrestling. Uh, my homie was, uh, at the time, he literally was like, yo, you got to watch this feud. We're eight years old. And he's like, was like, yo, we got to, like, wrestle each other. And I'm just like, huh? <laughs> and then he just proceeded to, like, put me in the walls of Jericho. Damn. And I was like, yo, I'm going to, like, fuck you up right now. Like, I really think like, you're taking this, like, too far. I'm like, whoa. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then that's when I started to watch more of what was going on. And I was like, oh, these are the moves you're trying to perform on us when we're, like, play fighting yeah. and shit. Oh, that's where you got this shit from. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, all right, now I understand. Now, So I wait, understand. wait, Chad, real quick. Yeah. Was it the Walls of Jericho or was it a Lion Tamer? Um, It was 2000, so let's go with the Walls of Jericho, okay. baby. All right, there Listen, is a difference. A, Lion Tamer, we're it was, not friends anymore. There's a modified Boston Crab. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boston modest. Crab is, is yeah, definitely was, like a friend the wolf. wolf. Lion Tamer, we're not friends anymore. I'm fucking you up. <laughs> yeah, Lion Tamer is like, you're way too, like, you are too precise with this to like be putting your knee. Yeah. Yeah. You're trying to like you're it. trying to actively injure me. Like it's done. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> Walls of Jericho is like okay. You're just doing a Boston Crab. I'm I'm picking up his leg down. I get it. But like Lion Tamer, it's like nah. You're too intricate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dory, you are not old. You're like 27. But anywho, Will. Next question. Next question is, who is your favorite re- wrestler currently? And then who is your favorite wrestler all time? And tell me why it's IRS. Aaron. <laughs> Definitely not Erwin R. Scheister. <laughs> Definitely not Erwin R. Scheister. Current favorite wrestler is Zack Sabre Jr. Had the pleasure oh, of meeting that I'm guy sorry. the other day. He is a nice no, guy. No. I've met him He's before. a nice He's guy cool. in person. He's a nice guy in por- He's a nice guy in person, <laughs> but his wrestling is just boring. But anyway, continue. And you are wrong, sir. You are wrong. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be a fun yeah, one. <laughs> you, are, you are actively wrong. And, Will, I know starting off with Zack Sabre Jr., it can't get any better, but the favorite all-time wrestler is your all-time favorite wrestler, the man whose uh, birthday it is today, Brett the Hitman Hart, definitely a Brett guy. So, yeah. Your two favorite guys are my two favorite guys. We have that in common, Will. <laughs> I don't think I could be more disappointed with that answer, to be honest. I don't think I've ever been more disappointed with Get an answer this guy everyone off the first the show guest game. Immediately. <laughs> like, I, okay, I, I, I do hate Bret Hart because he's just fucking annoying and he takes the sport too literally. But if you're going to tell me he's one of the greatest of all time, I can't say you're wrong. Like, I give the guy, 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 guy respect as one of the greatest of all time. He's just a piece of shit. And I'm glad Goldberg kicked him in the head. <laughs> God, damn. Oh my God. God damn. Let's move on to Chad. Chad. 
My favorite, well, my current favorite right now would have to be the aerial assassin, Will okay. Ospreay. All right. Uh, that guy could have a match with a broomstick or Swerve Strickland, and it'll be an amazing match. It don't matter. The spectrums could go from either or. Um, great, great wrestler. I enjoy watching him wrestle right now, anytime, any place. And my overall favorite wrestler of all time, are we talking wrestler or, or sports entertainer? Good call. It's your, it's, it's your question. You get to answer it however you want. Your preference. Just don't, just, just don't say Bret Hart. That's the only rule. Dwayne the Rock. Hell yeah, there you go. Now we're talking. Will, Will is I'm going, I'm going. Will's a good. Will's a big Rock fan. He saw the Rock for the first time ever at WrestleMania. Yeah, I did lose it. I did. I did lose it. I am a big Rock fan. I, I do prefer Stone Cold over the Rock, but I mean, hey, get, if you got if you got to pick a number two, I'm glad it's the Rock. Fair um, enough. Fair enough. Next so, question, Will. So this question was this question was going to be modified. We didn't we didn't add it. We modified it. So you have a friend coming over to your house, never seen wrestling before. That is you the need, extra question, okay. Yeah, you need to convince, you need to show them one match to get them sold on professional wrestling. What match do you show them, and why? Aaron, on you. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Do It Love Over the Edge 98. Wow. Uh, McMahon was the guest ref. The Stooges were the ring announcer and guest uh, timekeeper. <laughs> I know that match, actually. Undertaker <laughs> was, the, uh, was the enforcer. Um, they fought on cars. They fought all. It was, it's the most. It's a hot crowd. I want to say that was Milwaukee. Um, the crowd was fired. The action was fired. It was. It's a perfect match. It's a five star match on anybody's scale that has taste. <laughs> Chad. Mm. Um, for comedic purposes, I'm gonna go with the six woman tag from Dynamite. <laughs> with, uh, it was. It was in Milwaukee. You were correct, uh, by the way. Mariah May. Tony Storm and uh, I guess Marina Sharikawa was it versus Harley Cameron, Soraya and uh, Anna oh, Jay. Oh, you mean Mina Mina Sharikawa? Mina Sharikawa. Yeah, I think that would probably be a great one for satirical purposes. I'd show someone like, hey, this is some of the best women's wrestling <laughs> that you might ever watch. Six hot chicks going at it. What's not to like? Just six hot women just fighting on free television on Wednesday. You can't night. say wrestling's gay after <laughs> watching this shit. <laughs> yeah, not at all. Not at all. But then if I wanted to have an emotional factor to it, I would show them Brock Lesnar versus Eddie Guerrero, No Way Out 2000. Great match. Oh, okay, that's a good, Great one. That's match. A good one, too. Guerrero, that's a good one, too. When Eddie Guerrero won the WWE title, I think I, actually, I legitimately shed a tear because I was like, holy shit, Eddie Guerrero just won the WWE Cal title. Like, Palace. Area. Yeah, that was insane. Like, Goldberg interference and all. One frog splash and it was over. I was like, "This is fucking cinema." Incredible. Cinema. Yeah. Real Cyberg, real yeah. quick, because we don't say uh, segue. We say Cybergs. Uh, and we're we're not probably not going to talk about when we talk about Forbidden Door. Um, Mina Shirakawa, Tony, Mariah May, Thropple, official, official like Thropple. It. Yeah. Feels okay. Like okay. I just wanted to make sure. Just want just wanted to make sure. Official Thropple after 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 Sunday. Official Thropple. I saw the video afterwards. Yeah, I know scissors are timeless. <laughs> that, is, that is very, very true. That's very awesome. true. At the end of Pride, too, it was great. It was great. All right, well, next question. All right, this question is very simple. What's your finisher, bitch? Mm, this is, you know, I, I made up this finisher when I was a kid fighting pillows and shit, right? It would have been Those are like the best a, finishers. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, it would have been the, um, the fire, what the fuck do you call that shit? The fire, fireman, they put you on, like Fire's basically carry. about doing fireman's, fireman's carry. carry. Into a leg drop, right? So into like a DVD, and then you you bring them down into a leg drop. I don't know what I would have called it. Last name's Baker. Would have been Baker something. Baker's dozen. Baker's whatever the fuck. Baker's, Baker's whatever dozen, the fuck is a Baker's great name. Work. Baker's, 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 yeah, yeah. Baker's yeah. Mark. Baker's Mark. That works. Um, yeah, I'd go with that. Maybe a little submission action. Maybe do like something, you know, sharpshooter. I know you like that. We could do a, you know, something simple like that. <laughs> uh, it's it's the, the uh, it's, it's, it's the it's it's what what did Sting call it? Not oh, the sharpshooter. Scorpion, Scorpion death. Scorpion yeah, death block. block. There you go. Yeah, yeah, there, there you go. go. Yeah, it's the same. Chad, Chad, what's what's your finisher? I'm going with a classic maneuver that doesn't get utilized much. Mine in all fans. What a super kick! And even in my. <laughs> oh no! Clearly would have been a cut. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it would actually be a simple law lock. Um, and it would just be the stretch muffler. Nice. Love the stretch muffler. Nice. Nice. Good old stretch muffler. You don't you don't see anyone use a stretch muffler. The last time I feel like I saw anyone seriously use it was when Brock Lesnar was killing everyone in 2003. Stretch muffler. And I was like, yeah. this move. Look. 
Doesn't awesome. I think I think Eddie it's uses so that, right? Simple. Kingston? Maybe. I mean Eddie Kingston just borrows moves. Eddie's true, gotta body. worry about walking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Also true. Right Eddie's now. not using any finishing moves right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's fried. God, I, Eddie, Eddie Kingston was my first wrestling interview, and that was amazing. Great time. interview. He's a great interview. <laughs> it's an amazing time. I believe it. Rock I'd lock. share a beer with I Eddie. It. Yeah, it's really hard to get Eddie Kingston out of character. I'll tell you that. Because, dude, he is, <laughs> yeah. he is, he is, he is a it's character. still real. He lives the it's gimmick. It's still yeah. real to me, dude. It's still real. It's still still real to him. So I think we're on, we're on the final one, right? Uh, second to last one. The second to last okay. one is, it's always the same answer. How did you, oh, yeah. you discover the Kings of the Rings podcast? We know this. Uh, socials. Yeah, it's got to be socials. socials. I mean, Rick and I have known Twitter. each other. We just didn't. The funniest shit is that like he comes on. <laughs> he comes on our show an hour before the show starts. I'm like, yo, you? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> An email. I'm like, yo, I think I know you. He's like, yeah, it fucking took you so long, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Ricky. Classic yeah. Ricky is waiting for you to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in my defense. Me, mind you, this had been booked for like two months or months. <laughs> we had been oh, following dude. each other for years. Pretty much. I'm I like, was like, yo, I fucking know this guy somehow. <laughs> follow his stuff. I like his stuff. Since I retweet tremendous. his stuff. And yeah, tremendous. never figured it out. Never. He was on my he was on my personal like Twitter. Yeah. Just never figured it out. An hour before I get an email, you know, they give me they give me the rundown and then Ao emails me separately from the thread. And he's like, "Yo, I think we went to school together." And I go, "Fucking took you long enough." <laughs> yeah, tremendous. Remembering that you know somebody when you're confirming if they're still going to be on the show is amazing time. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I had to pull out the yearbook and stuff because back in Ao's day, they they didn't have color yearbooks; they had black and white. Yeah, 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 yeah no doubt. So, uh, Chad, next question. Questions on you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> you got the same answer social media yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, answer's yeah. always Ricky I don't know if I keep his question in like one day they're gonna say me but that day's not it's not gonna happen it's not today <laughs> it's not there well no Jonathan no, found I was gonna say Jonathan yeah Jonathan found this out through you Jonathan, that yeah, was your Jonathan. friend yeah that was your friend yeah from school yeah how's he doing by the way I don't know I haven't talked to him Oh. Last night, last time I talked to him, Bray Wyatt died. So, oh well, well maybe you should check up on him. <laughs> so to say, see if everything's all right. Like, he's probably planning his, probably planning his wedding. That's my guess. I was, more, I was more, I was more friends with his fiance than I was with him. That's how I knew him. I knew him through his fiance. He was a good host. He was a good uh, yeah, good guest, kid. Though. Good kid. They're a really cute couple too. So I'm excited. I'm yeah. happy they're getting married. All right, time for the. To them. Yeah, time for the final question, the greatest question of all time. The final and most important question of the first guest game is, are you, gentlemen, individually, Team Slack, or are you, gentlemen, individually, Team Fuck You Slack? Answer instinctively, please. This is Slack the app? No. <laughs> That's an obvious fuck you to Slack. No. <laughs> so, so, so Slack, Ricky, how would you describe Slack? <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's a failed. K- he's a failed KOTR intern. We were replaced with a stuffed animal. Yes, there you go. <laughs> There's that. Ah. Oh, uh, if you saw, if you saw, there you go. There's one. There you go. If you saw our clip from last week's episode, that is slack. When he did the John Moxley hot take, that's slack. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I move whatever AO says, ah. man. Team Squad Ride. <laughs> Two more for the good guys. Fuck you, Slack. The everyone, team everyone just loves telling Slack the to fuck off. Yeah, he's like some. At least by what, 23, 24, 25? I actually don't know what his age is. I barely Mid- remember that he has a chin. Dude from, yeah, you barely remember he has a chin. We like, like his dad more than we like him. He's just one of, he's just one of our guy, one of our boys from Canada. Yeah, he's one of, he's one of, he's part of our Canadian constituent. Uh, well, Canada's cool, so you can't be that bad. Canada's a great place. Been there a couple of times. Uh, Shout out to the Canadian yeah. homies. Little, I will, little poutine uh, never hurt anybody. <laughs> Anywho, um, so... <laughs> <laughs> So I'll tell you a quick Slack story. Here's how we actually discovered Slack, besides from one of our Canadian constituents. He was on the low listening to oh, us yeah. for a while. This is how we when we it. were when we were like an audio podcast only back in like you know the mid 2010s. And around the end of a year, at a, at the end of one of the years, like 2017 or something like that, he decided to tweet at us a video message about how much he appreciated, you know, how much he liked our show and whatnot. 
and I was I, I'm on on the socials, and I saw this, and I brought it back to my to, to Will and our other co-host Dave at the time, and I literally said, "We're gonna shit on this on live, <laughs> like when we record." <laughs> and we we, we roasted the crap out of him. We played it live, and then we would pause and just comment on all the stuff. And somehow he still enjoys our company. To be fair, he didn't remember our names, so he gave us a yeah. shout out how much he loved us, but couldn't remember who we were. He literally said, like, I don't know which one of you guys controls the socials, and at the time, I would always say, hey, I'm the social media guy <laughs> of the group, and I was like, you don't know who this is? I was like, I'll give you a hint, it's the black guy. Like, come on, so I <laughs> get it together, and that's when Fuck You Slack kind of became a thing. We we make a, we, we make a, uh, an effort to have Slack on the show at least once a year. Different times of the year. Yeah. To shit on him. And wish Sometime, him a happy birthday. And wish him a happy birthday at the wrong time. And unfortunately, we forgot for 18 months, and that's why he was on the show last Yo, week. that is true, Fretz. His fan video inspired Fretz to do a better one. That's also very true. <laughs> but to, I mean, to his credit, though, forgetting a birthday for 18 months means you're just half a year younger than you should be. So you're good. Don't give me that Steiner math, A.O. Good. Stop. I Do mean, I'll me take it. Math. It's got a, you know, 121 <laughs> and one third percent chance of being younger. You know? It works out. I, I I guess I guess he's he give finally, or take point two, yeah some something like that. Slack's actual B day is next week. I'll remember to totally not mention it at all to him at all. <laughs> not not once. I will. I'm, I might block him from my souls as I feel like like we forgot about him or something. I don't know. Making some real hate, but anyway, that is the first guest game. So thank you guys, Ringside Club, Chat Law, Ao Baker for for being a part of one of the more entertaining entertaining first guest game segments we've ever had. I would love to see AO and Will just go at it about Bret Hart, but not on this episode. No. Will, we have to we have to do like a, a nice little Bret marathon watch along. That would be good. Uh, Put that behind a paywall. I mean, like, we'll like, make some did, we'll make some rent money. Like, did you watch <laughs> did, did you watch uh he was he did his Stone Cold sessions like a few years ago and they're mm-hmm, watching the WrestleMania mm-hmm. match. He's like, Bret Hart's like, man, look how good my punches are. I'm not even touching you, can't even tell. I'm like, wow, Bret, get a room. <laughs> like great punches. <laughs> like Bret Hart is the kind of guy who gets an erection watching his own wrestling matches. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was the best it is. Like, Brett, how about you pretend to be humble for once? <laughs> <ask> Why? <laughs> nah. Why? It's nah, because, Brett. like, dude, there's better people than Bret Hart. Like, <laughs> he, but he's, not in Brett's opinion. I mean, I, I, I will. I no. Here's the thing, though. The thing about the one, the one time I ever saw Bret Hart be humble is when he gave himself the Bret Hart scale. He's like, I'm a ten on body. 10 on in ring, but I'm like a seven on the promo. I'm like, all right, at least he's honest. <laughs> That's how you know that every other time that he mentions his own matches, he actually believes that shit. He's not lying. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know he is he has great matches. I'm not saying he's a bad wrestler. I'm saying he's a piece of shit human being. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know when I meet him. It's like, hey, it's like, Brett, you take a picture of someone, please don't look like he just got news you have pancreatic cancer. On your face. Oh, man. Like, that's what he looks like. I mean, she's shaking my hand, taking a picture. He's like, I have cancer. <laughs> like, like, thanks, Brett. He's had, had like, bummer. two strokes. Like, Brett, Brett's I mean, holding on. I, I guess. Brett. Yeah. Brett's had a rough go. He's <laughs> yeah. had a rough go. He's had a rough go. Anyway, we can talk about Brett forever. Let's move on. Uh, before we get into Money in the Bank and NXT Heat Wave uh, in that prediction battle that we're going to do, let's talk a little bit about uh, the 15 match segment that was Forbidden Door from pre show. Oh, you mean the AEW uh, Saturday Night Live special <laughs> yes. comedy show? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. You had that. I, I I I watched as much as I could before this show. And I got th- Martha Hart there? No, no, there's no Martha Hart. There Thank was God. no Martha Hart. It, it would have been seven hours. It still might be going, actually, if Martha Hart was there. Um <laughs> but, but uh the show was the show was what it was. It was a good decent show that had a couple of decent matches. You got what you thought out of AEW. Uh Taz is pissed off about something all the time. A four man booth is absolutely insane and never needs to happen in wrestling. Um and it, it was it more Nigel McGinnis though. I'm fine with Nigel. Excalibur could always be dimmed down. Tony Schiavone could always take a break. I'm here for Nigel and Taz on commentary at all times. That's that's fine. That's fine with that. But like okay, let's stop let's stop dragging JR into this whole thing. Uh but 
He only did two matches. What's the problem? <laughs> I love how he I got know. pissed. Like, just give this guy behind me another beer. <laughs> they broke the fourth wall a lot. They that broke the fourth wall a lot. They didn't have agitated. To... Jim Ross is an amazing human man. <laughs> He's just such a cranky old man. It's so <laughs> sad. I can only aspire to be that cranky at his age, man. Yo, we had Jim Ross and Jim Jones on the same fucking. Yeah. I will. I, I will. Boys, I like. will say one thing about look, Osprey and Swear was a fantastic and well deserved main event. Uh, that was the only match we all came to this show for. I can. You can. A lot of you us can were... tell by the noise or lack thereof for most of the matches. I can tell you that right now, but. Jim Ross and the announce team did not have to call out Jim Jones busting his ass when he was hopping the barricade. That was on call. That was good. For. That was funny. That yeah, was funny. Jim Ross was out of pocket for that. <laughs> yeah. Nobody that knew funny. except for who was around and Jim Ross gets on and, you know, God damn, he just busts his ass. <laughs> All right. Check fall. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> and they say they'd learn how to He's fall. Falling. They can't learn how to fall. <laughs> There's no yeah. net. Yo, for real, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who says they Falling. Learn? No. Yeah, but my highlights of Forbidden Door were uh, Swerve and Osprey, obviously. MJF's Islander-inspired gear, which was kind of a dope, dope look. Uh, and obviously Mercedes uh, doing what Mercedes does. Um, <laughs> Booking herself to win. Creative control, <laughs> baby. <laughs> creative control and all the money in the that world. doesn't work for me, Snooze. brother. <laughs> and, Snooze fest. And all the money in the world. I, what, I, what I will say this, and I'm, I'm a Mercedes, Mark, so please take this with a grain of salt. Um... It was interesting to see her switch to. What's up? So you're gonna say Stephanie Vacord dog? No, walker? no, not at all, not at all. I'm not <laughs> gonna say that she was dog. I'm, I was focusing more, more solely on the fact that V. It was a dumbass Long Island crowd. Uh, like, how do you get a "fuck the Celtics" chant randomly in the middle of your match? <laughs> it was "fuck the Celtics" and then "fuck the Red Sox." But watching Mercedes, Cotton well, she's from Boston. That's why built from Boston, originally from Iowa. Um, yeah. But to watch kind of her born in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> to to watch her kind of switch to become like ultra heel was uh was was very interesting, yeah, but not as interesting as. The in my opinion, a really weird Britt Baker return. She showed up, essentially did her entrance, and then like sashayed away into the back. It sounds like what most AEW return <laughs> debut pops kind of are, anyways. Though they just appear out of the tunnel, <laughs> give you your chant, and on to the next segment in our best DNA. <laughs> <laughs> or if no, I think that's. That's just wrestling in general. For some reason, right? Wrestlers don't understand that there isn't like an invisible wall dividing you from getting to the ring. Like you can go. But they hit the entrance, they stand there, share some looks, and then we j- I just can't make it past this spot. So I'm just going to stand there. Okay. CM Punk thought about it in Survivor Series, but then he saw the reaction from Drew and Seth. And he's like, I'm going to stay over here with the yeah. Chicago guy. At least he didn't start <laughs> dancing like Jeff Hardy did that one time when he went to go save his brother. Oh I my just, God, I just figured so out, like, the, the real forbidden door is the ramp, the little <laughs> entranceway between. <laughs> That's the uh, real forbidden door. I just figured it out. It's going through Gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> Britt just didn't have the keys. <laughs> That's ridiculous. All right, Aya, what was your highlights of Forbidden Door? Swerving and Osprey, for real. I mean, like. That match was a bona fide main event. Like, main events drive wrestling, and that's what a lot of people bought the pay-per-views for and bought yeah. tickets to see, and that shit delivered. You know what I mean? It definitely delivered. The one thing, like, I just wish that they didn't play their hand a little bit as far as the weeks leading up. Like, the two weeks leading up, there were little things here and little things here. MJF getting involved and Danny Garcia getting involved. That kind of made it a lot clearer to me that Swerve was retaining because when they first booked that match – Everybody said, I don't exactly know what's going to happen, and I like that. Neither guy can like afford a loss right now, which makes this really, really good. Um, but other than that, like there were some good matches. There were some matches that I just didn't want to see. Like Again, I'm a Sabre guy. I enjoyed that match with Will Ospreay. Um, interesting styles right there. I thought Danielson and Shingo was... Pockets. Yeah. Those pockets. I thought uh, Danielson and Shingo was pretty good. Yeah. Um, I thought Tony Storm... The, the, and, and Mina was really good. Like there was some quality matches, but bottom line, if I'm you know directing somebody to watch this, the main event is where you want to go. Absolutely, Chad. What are your thoughts on Forbidden Door? I know you were tweeting for a lot of it. Oh uh, well, um, rough start to the pay per view. Um, Hechicero really 
didn't need to be. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, he was. MJF, I don't know if that was a real injury or not, but, you know, I'm cool with him, like, doing the opening, kind of getting out of there, moving didn't on. Didn't even have his own merch um, again for Forbidden Door. Listen, MJF didn't need to be on a fucking card. I don't care if he's from Long Island. I mean, yeah, I'm with you, A.O. MJF could have actually just cut a promo, like an advertised promo, and it would have been just as effective and cut the match down. One match for the night would have been perfectly fine. Um, Okada, he is the Continental Breakfast <laughs> Champion, and he is just yes, Continental yes. Breakfast <laughs> Champion. He's wow. Just, he's, he's one of the brighter spots of the idiot world. Order. <laughs> like, I absolutely, like, I don't mind it. You know, I'm just like, I just kind of shrug my shoulders at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, me and the gang, we've spoken about this. What else more can Okada do? He's not going to be fed to, sw- to swerve at all. You know what I'm saying? He's kind of just in his role right now. But for me, I'm just like, eh. Like, is this the impact that the guys, that the the main guy of New Japan, like, is here to do? Like, like that's he it. left. He left New Japan for this. Like, yeah, it's like, all right. Like, he's just shrug my shoulders. Like, he's just a sidekick to the Young Bucks. He's it's he's cool. doing what I think Adam Cole uh, did when he went to AEW, and that is take a vacation. Take a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> highly paid vacation. Uh, that, high paid. Yeah, vac- highly paid yeah, vacation. Yeah. yeah. High paid vacations. Yep. Adam uh, Cole. Adam Cole took Danielson, a vacation with his girlfriend for a couple of years. That's what he's doing. And he got hurt a lot. Danielson and uh and Shingo Takagi definitely was one of my highlights of the show. Um, I I definitely ate my words on on Shingo. We all did. I think he definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't around for the pandemic with that guy, so I didn't really see his run as champion. But I'm like, all right, I appreciate this guy. They should incorporate this guy more as the top guy of New Japan. Don't know why it's not the case, but not the new Japan analyst of the RSC. So I don't know. I think that's that was a good match for me. Uh Saber and Pockets was a little slow, but um it got there towards the end. Zach you know Saber, a slow better. wrestler, who would have thought? I mean, it, you know, like you know what you were gonna get out of that match. Especially with Pockets, who seems to be leaning more towards the dark side with the more dark apparel every time I see him. I'm not reading too much. It into took it, me but, two times for you to say you know, Pockets to realize you were talking about Orange Cassidy. <laughs> yeah, when I say pockets, you got to just assume I'm only talking about the guy who puts his hands in his pockets <laughs> the whole time. Fair Wrestling. statement. Fair statement. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, another highlight for me would probably be um, Stephanie Vacor. Holy shit. Whether it wants to be admitted now or not that, oh, Mercedes purposely put herself in that position to show the world that Stephanie was legit and da 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 Yeah. How convenient is that? Cardi B voice. How fucking convenient. It's a great Cardi B voice, by the way. That yeah, sounds just like honestly, Steph really showed out. And I wish that AEW did more to show that Stephanie Vacor is a total package. If she doesn't sign with AEW in the next year, I swear for God, she better be with NXT by next year at least. She is a problem, a star. She has the look, the presence, the feel. The oh, ring, she was fantastic. The ring work. She was outstanding. Like I enjoyed that match a hell of a lot, despite what some people will say. Um, you know, some people probably say it was kind of a sleeper match, and most people didn't really come alive until the chance for the fuck the Celtics and <laughs> all that shit. But I was tapped in. Like, I was a great match. I was, Stay classic. It was a great, it was a great cool. match, yeah. yeah. No, I think, that was I, think the, I noticed the silence in the arena, which is very weird because the UBS arena is designed for acoustics. It's designed like the Coliseum acoustic-wise, and it's a low roof. Uh, but it was very striking, right. not only in the Mercedes match, um, which they were a little bit more lively than they were for the women's world title match, um, but also in the women's world title match, it was also strikingly silent. And I think it points to a bigger pro wrestling problem is that since it's been so male dominated for such a long time, a lot of pro wrestling companies don't know how to market women consistently. Yeah. Consistently. And you can't use sex appeal either. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> yeah. It, 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 I think it's it, it's also match, like a, a problem native to AEW is that regardless of star power, there's always that little window, 915, every dynamite. That's the only slot. The here you know come I mean? the so, women segments. Exactly. So it's it, when, when you kind of push it off to the side, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, we have them, too. Instead of let's start the show with, you know, the hot feud, you know, Mercedes is, is starting and, or, or, you know, timeless Tony Storm. She's starting the show. So you kind of push it off to the side so that you get that response because you trained your audience to, you know, accept that 
uh, mm-hmm. that division in that space as a side act. Yeah. Right. How do you guys think the IWC would react if AEW just cut the women's division and just focused more on just better storylines and this, you know, because their roster is too big. Right? It's rumored they have way too much of a circle jerk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we can't do that at all. <laughs> you can't, can't do, do that. You can't do that. But I, th- I absolutely need five star bangers like the six women tag team: <laughs> Tony Storm, Lena Shirakawa. Mariah May, Soraya, Harley Cameron, and Anna J. Like more Anna J, more Aminata, more fucking. I'll even throw Red Velvet in there by affiliation with Aminata. <laughs> like just more of the women in W need to be focused primarily. Like there need there should just be rampage on Fridays with just the women. Yeah, yeah, I think that exactly like, that like roster complete... is strong enough, especially with the roster that's on. Like Aminata is the, is the perfect name. Billy Starks is doing her thing. Athena's been the world champ forever down in Ring of Honor. Wait, 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 wait. Ring of Honor exists? That, that, that Ring of cool. Honor actually has, a, what is it, Death Before Dishonor? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I am still subscribed to Honor Club. You're the only one I know. I think I think that makes one out of the four here. Yes, so. yes. You're the only one out of the four. There's a twenty five percent chance that Honor Club will be watched you know? <laughs> on this on the show list. Yo, actually, yeah. Ayo, that's funny you said that. Who, who our guest last week was subscribed to Honor Club, correct? I'm pretty sure they mentioned it. They named Yeah, it. they mentioned had, it. Uh, I'm subscribed, but we had uh, junkies, uh wrestling, wrestling yeah. junkies, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. in Cincinnati. They them. said they're subscribed to Honor Club. So I was like, Oh, how convenient is that? <laughs> I, You've got even, someone else even that subscribe that. But like, point being, there's so many, there's so much talent. Ring of Honor, you know, could honestly be just a, a women's. Uh, pardon me, Rampage could honestly just be a, a women's show. You know, I agree. Friday nights, yeah. bunch of horny men watching <laughs> wrestling, and it's just all women. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, I'm sold, man. Like this shit is awesome. It's like watching stardom, but like on fucking simple television. <laughs> funny, funny you mention that as we move past Forbidden Door. The other big thing coming out of Forbidden Door is that there's a part two. So let's see if I can break this down. So New Japan has Wrestle Kingdom. It's the first big show in the pro wrestling calendar pretty much every year. Starting mm-hmm. January 4th, 2025. New Japan has on again, off again, being either one night or two nights, whatever floats their boat. They are saying the day after Wrestle Kingdom, January 5th, 2025, they are going to they're going to put on an event called Wrestle Dynasty. How it was marketed on the show was that the door is going to swing open to the Japan side and they're putting on the show called Wrestle Dynasty, which will feature New Japan, AEW, CMLL, you know, kind of what Forbidden Door was supposed to be featuring, a Ring of Honor, which we just established exists again, and Stardom, who was just bought out by New Japan. Um, so we're going to have this thing called Wrestle Dynasty in the Tokyo Dome, when Tony Khan was asked about this on at the presser, he said a whole lot of nothing. Uh, so your guess. Uh, hold on. What hold do we on, got? Rick. What do we got? He said, great. He said, it's going to be great. <laughs> Thank you. A lot of great <laughs> talent. You. A great show. <laughs> great performance. Greatness upon Ladies greatness and gentlemen, please welcome Tony talent. Khan to the show. <laughs> he said, great. He just said greatness. It's going to be a lot of great things. So he did say Does greatness. that mean CM Punk's going to be there? <laughs> <laughs> I can't front. I was rather confused because I was like, isn't Wrestle Dream like happening? So we got Wrestle Dream, Wrestle Dynasty. They had AEW Dynasty like a couple months ago. Yeah, now we have Dynasty, which is a wrestling show, not to be confused with Wrestle Dynasty, which also, get this, is a wrestling show. <laughs> Wasn't Dynasty also a soap Wrestle opera? Dynasty, not to be confused with AEW Dynasty or Wrestle Dream. <laughs> not to be confused with also AEW Revolution that happens, I believe, in January. Am I not mistaken? What's no, I think it's January? March. Is it March? It's, yeah, it's a little later. Yeah, so. so what's in January? What I don't know. AEW's still filling out their, their pay-per-views. I honestly don't know. Is it... We, I'm pretty sure we get a pay per view in January. I was gonna say yeah, it's, it's Blood it's, and it's Guts. AEW. Yeah, it's, it's, no, it's Blood and Guts is this one, this month. Yeah, Blo- it's, uh, Blood and Guts AEW, is a Dynamite uh, special. AEW's is a uh, bash for your cash. That's the pay per view. <laughs> Trouble in the bubble. Quake, Quake at the, at the, the lake. lake. Quake, Quake at the, at the lake. lake. Trouble in the so bubble. So, do we have yeah. any expectations for this? Because there is literally nothing we can go on. But this is a thing. No. Look, I tell you. I'll tell you exactly what it is. We, we were talking, uh, I think it might have been yesterday in the chat. Right now, I feel like New Japan, if you follow New Japan, they're in an interesting position because all of the main event talent has either left and gone to AEW or they're washed, right? 
Naito is the current champ. Naito should not be world champion much longer. At we all. have the G1 coming up. Shingo is a favorite. Saber is a favorite. We have a lot of young guys that aren't established main event acts. So it's an interesting time to get into New Japan, and I think it's pretty dope because we're seeing who the next crop that the company is officially going to get behind actually is. And I think between now and then, that's what's going to make Wrestle Dynasty actually interesting. You know, who are they actually getting behind? Who's going to be world champ by that time? The, the main event uh, of Wrestle Kingdom the night before is going to determine who the world champ actually is walking in the dynasty. And we'll see if that plays out. The other interesting thing is January 5th is usually um, kind of like the, the raw after mania for New Japan. It's a completely yeah. different, different show. So I wonder if we're still kind of keeping that same vibe where we're jumping off new storylines. How do how do all of these other companies play a part? But I think it'll it'll be it'll be what it is. You know what I mean? I think it's gonna mm -hmm. be this version, except New Japan is gonna be hosting. So if you're talking politics, they're gonna make sure that their guys are on top. Other than that, who are those guys? That's the real question. You know, who are those guys gonna be? It's a fair assessment. It's a fair assessment. Fitting timing that we did have this combo. Russell Purist literally just dropped an article uh in regards to New Japan talent having to step the fuck up. I didn't get to read it yet, but they just dropped it. But um I thought that was very fitting timing if that yeah, it's was wide the article because that was just Yeah. That was the conversation that we had yesterday. We were like, you know, yeah. I was rewatching the uh, the the horrible, horrible fucking Naito and John Moxley match that yeah. does John Moxley no favors of being one of the worst wrestlers in the <laughs> Jesus. That's John Mox is catching man. strays uh, twice and two. As I say, people are really hating on Mr. Mox. My God, he's he's. Yo, I, w I was a Mox guy, but it's like, yo, dog, this match. Like, <laughs> and, and I know he, there's not much he could have did with it because Naito ain't that good either. But I was really just like, yo, anyone else could have been in this position. Like anyone else. Gabe Kidd, David Finley. He's the leader of the fucking Bullet Club. Anyone. Oh, the Bullet Club still exists? Here. Yeah, I forgot about those guys. Yeah, right? the thing the Elite destroyed? The, the uh, Bullet, I mean, the bullet Club Jeff are Cobb behind the this. Forgotten Door. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Yeah, door door. yeah, yeah. There you go. That that is a good one. So, also Jeff Cobb extends his losing streak in AEW to zero and a hundred. That's that's uh, horrible. By the way, it's really sad to see, man. There's no way that Jeff Cobb can't pick up any win in the entire five years that AEW <laughs> has been around, and he's had cameo appearances. That that's insane. That a guy like Jeff Cobb can't ever get a victory at any point in well, time. And being with Hopefully, them. Wrestle Dynasty will change all that, and New Japan can start taking AEW titles. AEW takes all of New Japan's titles all the goddamn time. <laughs> but let's Back. let's move along uh, to the reason for this season. One of our seminal shows, Money for the Marks. It is Money in the Bank uh, preview show emanating live from Toronto, Canada, on Saturday. So it's a Saturday night pay per view or premium live event. We haven't had that in a couple of months in WWE. I know. I was I was enjoying Crazy. afternoon wrestling. I'm not gonna lie. I was. <laughs> Yeah, brunch, brunch with the, the two and a half hour <laughs> afternoon pay per views is <laughs> perfect. Perfect. You can tell me I have steak and eggs and watch wrestling with a mimosa. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, I was about to say a little exactly. little mimosa in the bank never hurt, man. Yeah. Ah, that's, that's what we should call it next year, Will. Mimosa in the bank. Mimosa in the uh, bank. Dude, money for money for the marks is a staple. Money for the marks is a staple. Next week, mimosa, mimosa, mimosa in the bank. Me next week. Although technically, the first money for the marks was the post show. Review show for Money in the Bank. That was st that was still an official episode. It was thirty six. Yeah, yeah, thirty three. Thirty three was thirty three. Picture this: it's the once, it's the last time Chad probably liked uh, Mox, aka Dean Ambrose. It was we. <laughs> my first, my first podcast was a was a post Money in the Bank episode. It's when all three members of a Shield held the world title in a night. Seth beat Roman. Dean cashed in. That was all. Awesome. Dean, ca that was LeBron awesome. and Kyrie were friends. Uh, and he won. And they won the Many title. Ago. And was... they won the title in the same night that that was going on. LeBron cried and hugged Kevin Love back when Kevin Love was relevant. Um, so that was all in one night. Damn, what a night! That was all in the same night. That was good. Man. Yeah, and we ended up and like at the time, you know, everybody liked Dean, and we all kind of just screamed our faces off for like five minutes when he cashed in in a wild, wild moment. And, you know, eight years later, we're here, and everybody is hating on Mox these days. Anywho, Money to Bank from Toronto, Canada, uh, is the middle part of a big weekend for WWE in the six, the home formerly known as, formerly held by Drake, but that's where Drake went to die uh, after Kendrick dog-walked him back to Canada. Uh, so you have SmackDown and... <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, man. We had a fun time with that week. Uh, SmackDown emanating from Toronto. And you got Money in the Bank event, NXT Heat Wave. We're going to talk about two of those three shows also going on in Toronto outside of Sami Zayn's comedy special, which is apparently a thing. You also have the Money in the Bank store emanating from Toronto with the first ever country themed Money in the Bank briefcase. With the literal Canadian flag Ugh. and the maple leaf, and if I was Canadian, I, I why is Jay Uso, why is Jimmy Jay Uso holding? He can't it? even show up in the Canada. <laughs> so <laughs> Bret Hart Wait, should be holding that briefcase. <laughs> I knew I was coming. <laughs> Wait, Jay Uso's in the match. Though. Oh wait, no, Jimmy can't show up. My fault. It's one of the Usos. Jimmy, Jimmy's rightfully not. Around because he can't travel to a lot of these out of the country. Yeah. Yeah, how so convenient is fucking that? Yeah, how convenient is fucking that? So yeah, so that's all going on. They also have Cody Rhodes as a Canadian Nightmare show, which also looks kind of dope. If I was Canadian uh, as well, but let's go on to this card and continue our prediction battle, which you guys will be a part of our Ringside Club okay. in, in a guest capacity. So we have the Money in the Bank Men's Ladder Match featuring Chad Gable, who surprisingly is not dead from the Wyatt Six. Uh, Jay Uso, Andrade, aka Mister Charlotte Flair, uh, him. We'll just call him him, L.A. Knight, and and the pettiest man in wrestling, Drew McIntyre. Uh, we're going to give it to the Ringside Club. Uh, Chad, who takes this? Uh, it's just him, Oof. Day one-ish. Jay Uso, I think, is the most credible person to win money in the bank. If you didn't see Raw's opening with him and the Fireflies and the entrance and all that. It's got the livest entrance in all like, of wrestling. This is the no-brainer. Livest entrance in all of wrestling. This is the... This, this is a no-brainer of who should win this. Because when you break it down, everybody in this match can get screwed out of winning the match by somebody. And the only person that doesn't really have anyone to screw them out of the match is Jay Uso. I mean, so Jay Uso, I think, wins. I don't think he cashes in the money in the bank for a good while. I think he's going to be the dark horse for the next 10 months with that briefcase. But it gives Jay Uso something to do. Since Jay Uso never wins anything big, anything major or never even has a singles title. I think him having money in the bank briefcase will be a great, a great uh, constellation. I can't say a constellation prize. It'll be a great prize for him to have in the meantime until he gets some more momentum. Yeah. Here's, here's my thing with, with Jay. I think Jay's going to win as well. And we're going to move it over to Aaron in a second. I want ideally in my stupid wrestling Mark booking mind, Jay cashes in and Jay wins and then cashes in on Roman as the ultimate payback for all those years of torment. Whenever Roman gets the title again, because Roman's going to get the title again, and Jay should be the one to mm. take it off of him. Mm. That's a heel move if I've ever seen one, though. So it's yeah, it's, people, it's a retribution yeah, that's move. That's the thing, though, right? Because yeah, Roman, Roman's Roman coming back as a massive baby face. Yeah. We're getting we want to, Roman to, to chance get on every for show. His now. Wise man. Listen, it's I, listen. No one's supposed to like Solo Suge Knight. It's all it's all Solo. He's Suge Knight. No one did you, yeah. did you like Suge Knight in real life? No, I didn't. <laughs> well, no, Solo is doing Solo is doing great. Yeah, his new group is very scary. Solo's a mixture of the the weekend from uh, from a Super Bowl performance and Suge Knight. Hey, Suge Knight had some great business. <laughs> yeah. It ain't. It's not hard to get a deal done when you can dangle somebody by the ankles out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Sign right here. <laughs> man, I think it was Solo wears gloves. Name your price. <laughs> hey, yo. yeah, solo solo yeah, wearing Tupac. gloves is like like super sweaty palm action. Like my boy, like we get it, but you know. <laughs> yeah, listen, listen. I lo- yeah. at least at least he's wearing shoes now. So yeah, I'm here. I'm here for yeah, shoes. Yeah, yeah. I'm here for I'm here for no bare feet on my television screen. <laughs> exactly. Hey, yo, who you got winning this thing? Had this been a few months earlier, I would have gone with L.A. Knight just because of the momentum. But Jay, like Jay, is right. definitely the guy. Jay is definitely the guy. We know that Drew McIntyre is tied up with CM Punk. In fact, we'll probably get to CM Punk pop up to cost Drew McIntyre at some point during this match. That's the real money feud is for both of them, and mm-hmm. that doesn't need a, a championship. And Jay Uso was hot. Like, we're going to get those custom Yeet in the Bank uh, briefcases that they're going to sell for $199.99 on Shop <laughs> WWE. You already know that's happening. <laughs> they, they're going to... They're gonna, 
<laughs> they're gonna have that shot of him, you know, walking down the crowd, holding the briefcase up as he walks to the yes. ring. He's gonna do all yes. of this back and forth. They're probably gonna put a light in the briefcase. You know, what I mean, we already know what this is. And if you, like like Chad said, everybody else kind of has something going on. Like Andrade, isn't he still a speed champ? Like he's not winning money in the bank, bro. Let's be real. He he's there. He's there to champ. take a bump. Andrade winning money in the bank might be one of the most cricket yeah. money in the bank winners that we have seen <laughs> since maybe Damian Sandow. Andrade is not listen, even listen, I, I, I love the was fan a Sandow. The Sandow wise briefcase was amazing. It, it was, but I picked Cody that Great. year. I picked <laughs> Cody to win that year. I thought it was his time, and I, I should have been right. The only way Andrade wins this is if he wins, and then he hands it immediately to Charlotte Fair on her return, so that she can get a <laughs> she can get another quick championship win in the yeah, I'm Charlotte wins, Flair clause of WWE. The real cash in is Charlotte cashing in on Andrade. Give me my shit. <laughs> That's the real cash in. Give me my shit. You ready? You know what time? It is. Andrade's not even used to wrestling matches. That's that's going to be this long anyway. You know. So he's down there doing. He's down there doing two and a half minute specials on on X. Or or not being used on AEW. Complaining about his booking wherever he goes. <laughs> yes. I mean, if we if I recall, Andrade's last ladder match wasn't AEW, so I think he could maneuver through this match pretty well. Nah, he's gonna kill it. Like in all yeah. seriousness, everybody here, I expect to absolutely kill it. And but yeah, everyone's it just makes die. Way- yeah, I hope I hope we don't get any injuries. The most nervous I've been for a ladder match recently was the, the NXT joint from uh, a couple weeks back. Yeah, down in, in UFC, because mm-hmm. everybody there, I was like, I'm just waiting. Like, I hope nobody tears an ACL or the patella moves to the side or anything Ooh. like that. Uh, but yeah, this is Jay Uso. Jay Uso's briefcase to win. You got Jay Uso too, Will? No, I think oh. it's a little too obvious. I don't. I don't think he needs it. To be honest, I don't think he needs it. Uh, LA Knight going to a feud with Logan Paul, not going to happen. Drew McIntyre going to a feud with CM Punk, not going to happen. Uh, Carmelo Hayes, him, isn't going to cash in on Cody, not going to happen. Andrade's there to nope. take a bump, not going to happen. So we're down to Chad and Jay. So Jay, I don't think, needs it. He's already over. Chad just signed a new deal. He needs something to carry his new faction. And I think him with the briefcase, is this a good excuse for him to run his mouth? So I'm going Chad Gable. Master Gable. My only thing with Gable is like he can't even win the Intercontinental title, so I'm supposed to believe that he's going to win the world title. That's fair. Master but Gable. Hey, it's, it's, it's but, why I guess, I mean, it's, why I guess it's a briefcase. cash in, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's cash in. He's, he, wouldn't wear, he wouldn't win a fair uh, one-on-one, but he might win and cash like, in. Yeah, the thing, like, who, is, who would Jimmy, or I keep calling him Jimmy, Jay cash in on? Like if, if you could give, give him that long run, but I... I think Gunther's bringing that belt at SummerSlam. Oh, if not SummerSlam, he's winning at Bash in Berlin. <laughs> or Bash in Berlin, could yeah. Gunther. I think Jay could be the one to Eventually beat Gunther. Beat for the Gunther. Title. Yeah. I think, I think, I think he could beat him without the briefcase, though. That's the thing. Oh no, you can't. Not in how they built up Gunther. He, nah, he needs the briefcase because you just like Jay Uso, kind of is on par as far as Gable and as far as like the jobber department. But one's a heel and one's a major baby face. Yeah, so it's like. Yes, he's main event Jay Uso, but there's no real reason to make you believe in Jay Uso as a main event guy. Bex, he he does have nothing going on right now. They've had they've had nothing for him since uh, WrestleMania, but he's been super over. Yeah. That, so if, yeah. if you give him the briefcase, who does he feud with? What does he do with it? Just kind of sits around on his hands for a while. As like, per Money in the Bank rules, you. <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's it. That's money yeah. in the bank for you. I guess. All right. You sit on it I'm until people going, forget still, about I'm it. I'm still going with Gable, but I would I would not be upset if Jay Uso wins. I'm a Jay Uso mark. You eat in the bank, I'll sometimes like a mistake willing to happen, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, listen, Gable Gable <laughs> might need <laughs> Gable might need a faction, especially if the Creed Later brothers <laughs> if the Creed brothers do not survive Bloodsport, which they've just been announced for in Brooklyn at the end of the month. So Thing. Creed Brothers are doing Bloodsport? Doing Josh Alexander's blood sport. Blood sport. yep, just yeah. announced. Oh, man. Oh. And, uh, yeah, that might be a move. End of July in Brooklyn. So, might. so that, that's, that might yeah. be a move. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's going to be mandatory yeah. pull up. Uh, moving on to the Here Come the Women. I mean, the women's money in the bank. Do you hear me? Mickey is frozen. Look at him. So happy about it, too. See, Fred's going with Punk. There we go. I'm here. 
All right. So while Ricky comes back, we're still rolling. We marked the audio. All right. I guess I'm, I'm taking here. back over hosting. Oh, there I'm you here, are. You're right. right. back. You Sorry about All that. Right. So I marked, I marked the audio. We're good. We're still live. So on you go. Are you still? Are you frozen? I think I am still good. frozen for a bit. But yeah, you can go, let's go to this prediction. Then we'll we'll take a break, and I'll bring myself back in. Okay. You're your own avatar, right? now. I am so my own good. avatar. It's great. Uh, at least it's you. You can see who you are. That's true. Okay, so, so sound was gone for a little bit. Okay, so that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, so we're sound good. was gone since you froze up. Okay, so you're good now. Yeah, yeah. All right. This one, I don't know why, but Chelsea Green's really speaking to me. I'll tell you why. It is because Chelsea is from Canada, and since WWE has been doing all of these international shows, they always give the crowd one thing to be happy about, and it's got to be Chelsea yeah. Green. Chelsea Green is your hometown hero winner. Also, I'm picking Chelsea because uh, primarily she would be an absolute menace with that briefcase above everybody else ex- except for maybe Tiffany Stratton, but Tiffany, I don't think... You can't give Tiffy so much in her first freaking year. I think you give it to Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green will be maniacal with that money in the bank briefcase. Like you yeah, think she she's will. annoying She'll be so now? Funny. She'll be so she's funny. gonna be more annoying at, like with that briefcase. And it's gonna be brilliant TV. It totally it's a failed cash in though, for sure. Like hundred percent failed cash. The first failed first cash in. will be Chelsea Green. Yeah, Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, I would love to see Tiffany Stratton get it, but uh, does she, does she have heat? Is she have heat backstage? No, she's got Naya. She, I know she's <laughs> working with Naya. That's gonna be a good combo. That's gonna be a good team. But she hasn't really been on TV or doing much since this. Well, she she just got the last well the second last qualifying spot. So there's that. Yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna. How many of these women? How many of these women are SmackDown women? Like almost all of them. Half. It's only half. It's uh, Chelsea, who's, Naomi, and who's, Tiffany. Who's Ra? Eo. Won't be Zoe Stark. Is that Blair? Is that Blair Devonport? Who no, is that's that? Lyra. Lyra. That's Lyra. But, so Eo, Lyra, and Zoe. Zoe are Ra. Okay, mm-hmm. that makes sense. Naomi, Chelsea, and Tiffy. Fuck yeah! I gotta go. With, I gotta go with Chelsea Green on this one. I think Chelsea Green is great. Uh, Ao. This is tough as hell. Um, I, I'm convinced you sold me on on Chelsea Green. Like, EO was just in the world title spot, so it's not going to be her. It makes a lot of sense for Tiffany Stratton to be. Like, Tiffany Stratton is perfect for this type of, uh, for, for a briefcase. She's going to be annoying as hell, you know? Oh, yeah. She'll decorate that shit, put some rhinestones on it. Like, she'd be annoying as hell with that briefcase, which is going to be good. But, like, I also agree that it's a lot to give her. Especially, like, it, it's fine for her to win the briefcase if she's going to successfully cash in. You know, you don't want her to, to have a failed one. Chelsea Green can absorb because she's a comedy character anyway. So I, I might go with Chelsea Green. Like Naomi would be dope also, but Naomi, I feel like she just, you know, she's kind of come back to to nothing. Yeah, she's she's kind of back to be the portal to the main event. Job it to the stars, you know. That's that's Naomi. Right now. <laughs> Jobber to the stars. Job it to the stars. Job it to the wow, stars. <laughs> Chad, who you got? I'm not going with the obvious. I think Chelsea Green's gonna have that moment where she climbs up. Everyone's going to go ape shit. Oh, Canada. <laughs> and Tiffany Stratton's going to knock her the fuck out. And it's Tiffy time. I was saying it's Tiffy time back in the early parts of her coming to the main roster. And I'm sticking to it now that it's actually here. Tiffany Stratton will be Miss Money in the Bank. She's been kind of pretty much cooled off for the last couple of months. But I think this is by design. She's going to win the briefcase. She's going to hold on to it for a while. Not that mm-hmm. long. But I think this is going to be her way to get to the world title. Chelsea Green is not that great of a wrestler. Let's be real. No one really wants to see yeah. Chelsea Green matches. So, therefore, her being the looming threat over a world title in the women's division is not appetizing. And as AO said, she's more comedic. So, if anything, she'd have the Damian Sandow fucking run with the briefcase where it's like... Otis. Yeah, the yeah. Otis. My the peach. Otis. The Damian Sandow. Where, where it's like, damn, do we really need to waste the money in the bank on that? Like, Really? So I think Tiffany Stratton gets it. She's going to have a nice little heel reign, and she's going to be lingering over whoever is the women's champion for the next couple of months. I don't think she waits long to cash in, but she will be a women's champion in the next couple of months of being Miss Money in the Successful Bank. Successful Tiffany Stratton cash in. I'm here for You're it. You're talking yeah. about one of the craziest first, first years on the main roster for anybody, gender notwithstanding. That yeah. would be wild. Absolutely wild. Um, 
It ain't going to be Lyra Valkyra or fucking Zoe Stark. Not Zoe. <laughs> Justice for King Coda, too, by the way. Um, I, I see where you're going with chat, and I, I, I can see, because when you look at it storyline-wise, Tiffy is aligned with Naya. If Naya go and Naya is also a menace as Queen of the Ring, and we get Queen Naya. Naya takes out Bailey, which is a interesting, which is a very interesting possibility within a month's time. Naya takes out Bailey, and then you have a dynamic of the 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 friends that are Miss Money in the Bank and your your WWE Women's Champion. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's 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 story a story itself, right there. Too, get us through yeah. the ball. That gets us through the fall right there. We ain't got to worry about nothing, the who's, what, when, where, why. Nope, we're good. We already got some shit written up. Perfect. Yeah, so oof, that's, that's a tough. I'm still going to go with Chelsea Green. I I, I think I think Chelsea's going to take it. But we will find out in a couple couple of days from now. Moving on to not Money in the Bank uh, ladder matches, but a six-person WWE house show event. <laughs> Tag team mats <laughs> featuring uh, Adrenaline and his soul, something, something. Cody Rhodes is probably just legally obligated to be there and put on a match because he's the WWE champion and the face of the company versus Randy and, of course, Kevin uh, versus Bloodline 2.0, uh, Solo, Tamatanga, Tongaloa, and the monster. Yo, is this bloodline rules or is this just traditional? I think it's because this is going to be fucking chin locks <laughs> and bullshit. And Jacob, so I don't know if it's bloodline rules because like they have, they said it's six man tag. So one of one of the one of the members of this new bloodline is not going to be in this match. Who it is, I don't know. Probably, um, probably Tonga Loa. I guess like nobody. I think it'll probably be time. Like everybody wants to see Solo. Everybody wants to see Tama, Jacob Fatu. I think Tonga Lo is probably the odd man out. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah. we got the six person tag with without Paul Heyman for the first time, and God knows how long he he took. Man took a mean power bomb at sixty years old. <laughs> I, I hope this brings out Armando. Estrada. Stop! Stop! I've it. seen that way too much. On <laughs> so, I saw that going around. <laughs> and I go I'd no. I'm with it. My eyeballs. <laughs> no. I'm with no. it. I'm with it. I was there for the Umaga run. I'm with it. I'm with it. Give me Armando. Dude, I was there when he was the GM of ECW. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with it. I'm with it. All right, Sir Charles is saying one of them has a record. That's the one who'll miss the he'll miss the tag match. Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Be it as it may, Will Terrace are going on you. Who who takes this? Is uh team team America, I guess. Well, no, America because Kevin is clearly Canadian. Uh, yeah, Canadian. is it? Uh, is it? Man. Yeah, is it Cody or is it's the baby faces versus yeah. the heels? Cody, or... Team America, World, Team America, World Police. Um, or over, 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 you know the the Tonga. America, fuck, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Bloodline solo wins. <laughs> they beat up on Kevin. <laughs> I mean, Kevin is probably gonna jump off something high. Yeah. Like a ladder. <laughs> I don't. What if in the middle of this match, Kevin Owens just climbs up and gets the briefcase? <laughs> just takes it for himself. <laughs> yeah. So let me let me get that. Let me get that. Let me hold that. Honestly, I would love for that to be kind of a weird thing that someone outside of the Money in the Bank ladder match, because those briefcases are hanging. The entire like, like show. R-Truth gets it in a commercial break. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I want to see WWE kind of talk right their way out of that situation. They were like, well, the only rules are you got to climb a ladder and grab the briefcase. I climbed the ladder. I got the briefcase. How am I not Mr. or Mrs. Money in the Bank? Like, that is a great logistical, like, problem to, to run into. Our truth walking out of the night thinking he has two shots to be a world champion at any given time. <laughs> I yeah. need that. I need that. I need that. Need it. Need it. Absolutely need it. Yeah. If there's anything that could make me laugh out of this pay-per-view, is like that happened last week. That's amazing. <laughs> You'll sell a hell of a lot of briefcases, that's for sure. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. So we're going with Bloodline. I'm going to go with Team Cody. Very good. Uh, Ayo, who you got for this? This is a matter of who takes the pin. Is it Kevin Owens or Tamatanga? I'm gonna go with Tamatanga <laughs> taking the pin. So I'm going Team Cody for the W. Chad Law. Uh Toa Leoa needs to take a pin. So I think Tama has already eaten enough pinfall in an RKO already from the previous uh pay per view cycle. So I think Toa Leoa takes the pinfall via an RKO uh crossroads stunner combination. 
and the rest of the bloodline retreats while he eats a pinfall. Um, I think the good guys need a win. The bad guys can afford a loss. Kevin Owens cannot take another pinfall, man. I don't care what anybody says. It really doesn't need to happen. Fair, <laughs> Fair enough. Fretz in the chat says, uh, Archie grabs the women's case and gives it to James Ellsworth, which would be diabolical. James Ellsworth references. Jeez. One chin, the no chin wonder. The no chin wonder. Why do we have a James Ellsworth? He's a nice guy in real life. He's weird, but he's a nice guy. Met him in New Orleans. Interesting time in life. God damn. Doing what? Oh, it was WrestleCon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was WrestleCon. Interesting guy. Why are you meeting James Ellsworth in New Orleans? What are you doing? We weren't there to see James. We weren't look? there to see James Ellsworth. <laughs> This guy just pulled up and goes, he's like, yo, James Ellsworth. I, I, gave him a, I gave him Mardi Gras beads and he flashed me. <laughs> Showed me his tits. It was great. He didn't show you his chin. Oh, that's for a fact. So catchy. <laughs> Did you just give me a thumbs down, Chad <laughs> So catchy. I didn't even know you could do it on Love Skype. It. That's amazing. Love All right. It. Anywho, moving on um, to the world title, Damian Priest, the Scotty Pippen of WWE. Uh, go for wow. defending. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like how that's accurate. <laughs> it's the voice. Nah, it's, it's the voice. That is, that is very it kind of looks like him too. It's, it's it's the look. It's everything. He's, he, like if the, if if the meme was that he's a bisexual Scotty Pippen, people would believe. Listen, it. we have bisexual Undertaker and Puerto Rican Scotty Pippen. It 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 both it both goes. It goes. For me, it's just the the overall presence of Damian <laughs> Priest. Like I compare it to the Attitude Era. Like if I look at the landscape of ninety eight, yeah. ninety nine, there's no fucking way Damian Priest against Steve Austin is going to stand a chance. <laughs> That's not. Like, no way am I believing that Damian Priest has a chance to beat Steve Austin, The Rock, Undertaker, Kane, Triple yeah. H, yep. Kurt Angle. Yep. Like, I just don't see it. Not that that's like, not that I don't fuck with Damian Priest, but it's like, just something just ain't there. Like, it's not, it's not clicking. He, mm. like, I think, like, yeah. I think Kane is the perfect, uh, perfect comparison, right? Kane was always a guy who, if you need to put somebody in the main event to take a loss to further a storyline, that's about as far up as you're going to go. But you're not selling tickets. Nobody's buying tickets to see Kane, right? Same thing with Damian Priest. Like, he's good for whatever you might need him to do, but he's never the guy. You know, you don't look at Damian yeah. Priest and say, all right, we're building around Damian Priest. Yeah. Yeah, it is his first world title run. The stipulations, if I remember them correctly, with the returning Seth Rollins, is that if Damian wins, Seth can no longer challenge for the world title as long as Damian's champion of Pretty much a very a very AEW Cody Rhodes stipulation, if you may. Um, yeah. <laughs> and Cody might have pitched that. Cody might have pitched that idea. And if this is how Seth goes, <laughs> he just starts losing his mind because he can't challenge for the world. And title. if Seth wins, <laughs> Damian has to leave Judgment Day, which ooh, such a punishment um, for him. Because let's be honest, for Martinez. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. For, let's be honest. Damien wants to leave Judgment Day. It is blatantly clear in his face, in his tone of voice, Damien wants to get out of there so badly, and he is just stuck. However, Damien's retaining in some weird fashion at Money in the Bank in Toronto. I don't know how, but I think he's going into SummerSlam with that world title. He might even beat Gunther at SummerSlam. It is, it is, it is, it's a very possible thing. I think everybody believes that Gunther is the heir apparent to the world title, and he is, but not when you think it's going to happen. I think Damien survives the summer as the world champ. Especially with Bash in Berlin. Yeah. Shortly yeah. after. And if Bash in Berlin has a crowd like we saw with that German constituent on WrestleMania, oh, oh, oh. hostile. Oh, Hostile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Ayo, who you got for this? Is there a world where Jay Uso cashes in to win only to then lose to Gunther at Bash in Berlin? Uh, yeah, it's possible. Oof. That's tough. That's a that's a that's a hard transition. Hard. Very quick one. Yeah. Very quick one. But I think you reset it fine. Because once Gunther has that belt, he's not losing it for any any time soon at all. Correct. You know? I mean, maybe. Because like <laughs> it, it's tough for me to to it's tough for me to look at Gunther versus Damian Priest as a main event. Agreed. Oh, it's not. It's gonna easily be the fifth match of the night. 
but it'll be well built. I think like if if yeah, if you do that match, it definitely has to be Bash of Berlin. I don't even think you run it at SummerSlam. Yeah. Well, it's already at SummerSlam because Gunther won King of the Ring. That's what I'm saying. So I think like yeah, I think Jay Jay Uso cashes in at some point between now and SummerSlam. Ooh, so probably well, I guess it, it's if you if you're Triple H, right? Gunther? You gotta think what what do you what do you want to do if you're Triple H? Do you want to have Damian Priest versus Gunther in the bottom slash middle of the card? Or Damian Priest, uh, Seth Rollins versus Gunther towards the top of the card. Depends what the rest of the card looks like, which we don't really know yet. I'm going Seth Rollins to win this. I am too. Aww. I am too. I I'm think going Seth Rollins to win this. Da- Damian's a, he's a bad champion, man. I don't know what it is. His promos, it's... What do we get from Seth Franklin Rollins <laughs> getting the fucking world title. You get, you get, you get Franklin. two months of Seth Rollins to lose it to Gunther. And you Berlin. watch him get murdered by Gunther, and it's a better match. It's a bigger draw. It's yeah. more blockbuster. Yeah, Damien, I think Damien run... is not a believable champion right now. He's trying too hard to be charismatic on the mic. I think he's actually doing a pretty good job thus far ever since, uh, ever since the last pay-per-view that they did Clash. You know that 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 uh that after that after match pressure kind of did it for me, and he has kind of like stepped it up. They've given him more opportunities, they've given him time to speak. Uh, but with like the the Seth thing, you know, what do you get with Seth? Like clearly, Seth rushed his way back because he didn't want to be with Becky. You know, clearly, clearly, Seth was like, I need to get back on the road. <laughs> Seth was like, I'm going to work. You can decide not to sign your contract if you want to. Yeah, they pay the bills, so I'm yeah, going you about to, to go over to the other company. I'm coming back. I'm going to work. <laughs> you know, you can do that. You can play that Rebecca Quinn game all you mm-hmm. want. I'm Seth freaking Rollins over I here. I think Gunther going into Bash in Berlin <laughs> is the draw already. So whoever has the title, yeah, is exactly. like is whoever has the title is going to be the sacrificial lamb. And are, do you want to give it to somebody who is? Like, if you, are you going to have Jay become the sacrificial lamb, your hottest non-title holding baby face, just to kind of get killed, or do you want to give it to Damian Priest, where to, or Seth Rollins, who might have an inkling of upsetting Gunther in his home, in his pseudo home country, because he's ah, actually from shit. Austria. You know, like that, that. That's the that's the qualm you're in. Like, there's no timeline currently where Gunther leaves Berlin without a title. Right. I like there is no timeline yeah. at all. It's a matter of does he come in with the title and leave with it or does he win it and then leave with it? The bigger question is who hands that title to him? And you've got three contenders. It could be Jay, it could be Priest, it could be it could be Seb. Seb's had his run. Because, I, I, I think because, you're right, Ricky. Yeah. I think it's Damian Priest. I'm going I'm going back. I'm taking Damian Priest. Here's the thing. If it was Vince, it would be Seth Rollins. Oh, yeah. It's not Vince. <laughs> Hell, yeah. It's Triple H. And Triple H is trying to make yeah, a statement because sake- he capped this guy as a Triple H era. And you'll go, it makes him look bad. So does da- so Damien the- loses to Gunther at SummerSlam. Gunther. Yeah. You were at yeah. SummerSlam or at Bash in Berlin. I, I say Damien yeah. survives the summer, which would include SummerSlam, and then Bash in Berlin is when he drops. I think he drops at SummerSlam, and then Gunther and Seth in Berlin. You can do that. I think. I All think right. that's the. Let move. me just interject. I think that's the move. And get this off. Too much of the fantasy, yo. Who's gonna take Gunther SummerSlam Berlin for the sake of money in the bank, <laughs> right? Enough with the fantasy predictions. We're just gonna go. Damian Priest retains because he needs a credible win. Yeah. To continue his role. Yeah. Hard wins. He's already beaten Jay. He's beaten De- Drew. Beat Seth. Now you have a credible win and a credible reign as you move on to your next feud, which is potentially Gunther. But Ayo did throw me for a curveball when it came to Jay Uso potentially cashing in the money in the bank after a judgment day snafu happens after the match. That could cause Jay to win the title from Damien to then move on to SummerSlam. I could only I could accept that. But overall, I just see it being Damian Priest being Seth Rollins. Rather clean. I don't even think yeah. it'll be anything like hokey pokey. I think it was like yeah. south of heaven. Yeah, so. I can go with that. Yeah, I can go with that. I think it's it's very WWE, right? For for uh, Damian Priest to win and avoid getting kicked out of the Judgment Day to only then on Monday Night Raw get kicked out of the Judgment Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's yeah. very true. That could work. Yo, that group needs to end already. 
Like, honestly, they're just hanging around playing video games in a clubhouse. They might as well have a fucking Listen, there were nuggets. There were nuggets. There were nuggets involved one week. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Well, dude, they they might as well just be ripping bongs and playing video games and just, like, chilling out in clubhouses like the fucking rascals. rascals. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, Liv Morgan is the women's world champion, and I could give a fuck less about that at all at any point right now because I don't think any of it matters. Like, none of that matters. She has no title defense. She doesn't do anything but just run around the Judgment Day and want to hang around Judgment Day. She's, I mean, she's beating Zelina Vega. Cool. Whatever. I don't know. Like, the women's world title picture to me has just been one big eye roll. Yeah, like, I've she's, just got, been she's like, got oh, no, God, she's got no like, competition. She's got no wrestlers. Who's she going to go up against? I, I don't. I guess we really are just waiting until Rhea returns, and that's Soon. like what I was hoping yeah. to avoid. Like, I was like, this is why you should have just put the belt on Nia to begin with. But everyone wanted to fight me about it. Like, nah, <laughs> Nia is a beast and she hurts people. And, oh, <laughs> That's oh, the oh. idea. It's like, no, she actually should have just won the world right. title right out. This is a combat <laughs> sport and people get hurt. <laughs> Yo, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I think like, Priest retains because Priest has, Priest is the only thing holding Judgment Day together until Rhea returns. And when Rhea returns, then whether it's SummerSlam, whether it's Money in the Bank, because Rhea's coming back soon. I have that feeling. Rhea will kick Damien out where therefore Seth gets his wish, which is like, I want to get Priest out of Judgment Day because he can do better. He needs to see his potential through, which was kind of the reason Judgment Day was created by Edge in the first place. Well, it's kind of a weird, yeah. it's kind of a weird circle they're going in with that. But Priest needs to retain because if Priest does retain, Judgment Day is a is chaotic as hell because I think yeah. I think Finn in kayfabe is clapping cheeks with Liv. That's what I'm. That's what I'm made to believe. Oh yeah, that, that's, a story <laughs> that's what I'm seen. made to believe right yeah, now. Yeah, like Liv. Uh, 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 I want to say Glaber because I'm looking at the Yankee score. Uh, <laughs> Finn and Liv are secretly plotting. Yeah, yeah. And to take so Finn can take over Judgment Day. Yeah, yeah. That that I think that's what it is. But moving on. To this, I'm still shocked he didn't. He, I'm I'm still like sick. He wasn't in Money in the Bank. Like I think him winning Money in the Bank would have been the perfect like solution to all. You have stuff. Money in the Bank being being Judgment Day's hands for two years in a row. Yeah, they're ta- they're I mean, tag team least, champs. It's fine. I mean, at least Finn Balor has a chance to get back to the world title picture, and then it gives him a reason to fight with with Damian and actually win the touché, world. Touche, touche. Well, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, moving on to, I believe, is the final match on the on the Money in the Bank card. Uh, we have Sami Zayn, again, a uh, semi-hometown hero, who will try not to die from roided up Goldberg, a.k.a. Braun Breaker, and his Steiner math, and everything in between. This has kind of been built in, like, the classic Sami Zayn way, lovable loser versus... I'll fight you. Yeah, I'll fight you. I'll you sure? I'll take whatever, yeah. you know, against Braun Breaker, who is clearly just a more athletic Goldberg in the Dude, skies. He's so fucking over. Future. This guy's yeah. the future. I don't know if you saw the clip, Will, on Monday. Braun Breaker was halfway out of the ring. He turned around and accelerated to like 20 miles an hour and speared the crap out of Sami Zayn. I've never seen anything like it. Oh, I'm going to watch that after the show. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I am. And if Chelsea Green doesn't win, then Sammy's the winner here. Although I believe Sammy does one thing really well, and that's losing Canada. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he is he is Hall of Fame Canadian loser. That's yeah. a fact, though. Yeah. Sammy <laughs> does a lot of great losing in Canada. Fact, you know. <laughs> you know, he debuted against John Cena in Canada, b- separated his shoulder, and lost. <laughs> you know, he main evented against Roman Reigns and lost in very amazing fashion. In spectacular <laughs> Spectacular fashion. loser in his own town. <laughs> you know, so it's hard for me to to believe Sammy's going to pull it off, but I think Sammy's going to pull it off in a weird way. Hey, yeah, what do you got? I'm going Braun Breaker. If this if this show had another two or three matches, this would be a squash. Like I, I yeah. would book Braun to squash Sami Zayn in front of his family. You know what I mean? <laughs> but there's five matches on this card. It's going to have time. This but might yeah, op- Braun, this might open the show and won't. But it, is that a possibility if it weren't two ladder it'd be, matches? It'd, it'd be the perfect. This is the perfect. Yeah, there are two ladder matches, but this would be the perfect one to get that Sami Zayn pop with a fresh crowd. We haven't seen anything yet and have enough time go by before the end of the night so they can absorb that disappointment of the <laughs> loss that is coming to that man. 
<laughs> you know, let's let's open up with disappointment and then get into some ladders and shit. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, Brown Break is definitely, <laughs> you know, he's the world, he's the uh, the IC champ for sure. Chad Law, who do you sure. got? Uh, Sami Zayn retention. Ooh, I think Sami Zayn's, uh, Sheamus and Ludwig Kaiser will have something to do with this. If not, Bronson Reed will have something to do with this because that intercontinental division has pretty much just been floundering around. Braun Breaker has just come out of nowhere. <laughs> Granted, he's killing it, but it's like, really, he just came out of fucking nowhere, and now he has a title match. And I just don't see him bulldozing Sami Zayn, who's been having a pretty solid run as an Intercontinental Champion, who, by all accounts, I feel like should have lost to Gable, which I feel like a lot of people... I do. felt that yep. way, too. But yep. If he didn't lose to Gable then, I don't think he's going to lose to random-ass Braun Breaker now. <laughs> I think it's going to be a screwy finish. It might not be a clean finish. I think it'll be a screwy finish on account of Sheamus, Ludwig, or Bronson helping somebody out for a DQ. Yeah. Sammy might have to be booked strong because he did upset Gunther in a match that no one saw coming at WrestleMania. Um, so he might have just to, you know, give Gunther still some credibility and give Sammy some credibility. I agree. And that point, too. That point right there, too. For him to just lose to Braun Breaker, who just literally came out of nowhere to get this title shot, I just don't think that's the case. But when Braun does win the IC title, nobody's taking that shit from him No, for a while. not at all. That much. It'll definitely... Definitely be a while with him for that, yeah. though. Who you got here, Will? Oh, fuck. You guys have me split again. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go, go with Chad over here. The dusty finish. Sammy walks out with the belt. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, a Canadian is winning in Canada. It's either Kevin Owens, Sammy, or Chelsea. It's a guaranteed win there. There's one Canadian winning in Toronto. Don't see it being Chelsea. Don't see it being Chelsea. Crazy enough. Yeah. Don't see it being. It, it's, <laughs> we're going to get a GoFundMe for Sammy's funeral. Thank you, Dory. Yo, not for nothing. <laughs> Sammy did retain at the last uh, Canada match against Gable, even though that's when Gable turned, but he did win. He did. He did. He did. He did. And that's, that's enough wins in Canada for the year. For that. <laughs> <laughs> Quote has been filled. <laughs> That's true. Oh. That's very true. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is our money in the bank prediction. We got one more prediction to go. We're going to speed round probably a little bit of NXT heat wave. Uh, or we might. We'll see how it goes. But before we get to that, it is time for our crown system, ladies and gentlemen, of the ringside club. So how good do you think this premium live event, formerly known as a pay-per-view, will be? One or ten crowns. One being the worst thing ever, like an exploding barbed wire death match from AEW. Or ten being the greatest premium live event or pay-per-view of all time. So, Ao, how good do you think this pay per view will be? I feel like it's going to be a, a seven between a seven and an eight. It's really hard. There's five matches. There's no real weak match on the card, really. You know, like the mm -hmm. the, the the card is pretty solid. So I'll go, and then the crowd for whatever. If, if it's going to be a seven, the crowd elevates it to an eight. The eight crowd elevates it to a nine. Like you know, Canadian crowds are going to you know always be on fire. So yeah, I'm gonna go somewhere between seven and eight. Bizarro world in Canada, man. Chad Law, how good do you think this will be? I'm with AO, seven or eight. Like, this is always, PLEs with WWE really always bang. Like, you don't really have a bad below five-star PLE. And I mean, I say five-star, but below five out of ten rating with a PLE in WWE, like, in the last couple of couple of them. And that's just my watching and my viewing. So, I think it, it might not be a ten-star show, but I think it'll be, definitely seven to eight you know what i'm saying we're gonna have memorable moments we're gonna be saying oh shit i can't believe that happened at least twice so i'm here for it being quality pay-per-view i think it'll knock forbidden door out the park that's for sure. <laughs> 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 yeah that's well how, how well do you think this money in the bank will be i give it nine because nothing about this car is predictable and that is that go. is always there a good go. thing. And I love Money in the Bank. I love I love the concept of it. It's always a great pay per view. I'm glad it's like they took the the silent big five. Yeah. Um, they always do something crazy with it, and it's exciting to see. And okay, once they win, where are they gonna go from here? And always creates excitement in the landscape. So I have high expectations. Gotta go with a nine. Yeah, to your point, Will. Like this this card, as far as discussions over the last few WWE PLEs, this one I feel just the conversations that we just had over the last thirty minutes. Yeah, can go in so many different ways for some of these matches. <laughs> we have no, we have no idea, idea what's going to happen. And that's that's, <laughs> that's the place to be in. You know, not knowing yes. shit is is an amazing place to be. So, yeah, I agree. Well, yeah, I'm going to be a decibel guy. I'm going to go eight point five point four. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go eight point five. Like the crowd's going to be hot. It's Toronto. It's Canada. They're going to be a nutso crowd, especially 
um, when when their Canadians come out. Uh, it's it's it, it's going to be something. It's gonna, t- fucking Charles. Sir Charles said 7.344 because he wants to be a contrarian. Thanks, Charles. <laughs> um, which, which, that's worse than what Dave used to do well. 3.14981, uh, yeah, whatever pie off. is. I'm going with pie. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's that money in the bank is going to be going to be a very, very interesting time. Capping off the weekend is NXT Heat Wave, not to be mistaken with ECW, who used to do Heat Wave, but NXT Heat Wave emanating from Toronto again, capping off That's this weekend? Uh, a Sunday. Yeah. Sunday evening. Sunday evening. Wow. Uh, Sunday evening with NXT. So NXT is going on right now as we're recording, but we're going to go through what we know of the car thus far. Uh, whoop that trick is in a fatal four way against all legal Ethan Page, another Canadian, Sean Spears, another Canadian, and the guy who's 19 years old and literally like out of a video game, Javon Evans, getting a, getting a title shot uh, in this. What's going to be a wacky fatal That's four way? He's the most over guy in NXT, <laughs> not named Joe Henry. <laughs> Joe Henry's not even in NXT. <laughs> I know, the, but he's the he's spirit the most over of Joe Henry is. That's why you get excited. The spirit of Joe Henry lives forever. Um, God, this is going to be a wacky match. There's a lot of guys who can work. Uh, Javon Evans is going to put on a show, but somehow, some way, Trick retains this. I think we're going to go with Trick. Well, what do you got here? Well, we'll yeah, trick, yeah, trick, trick retains. Whoop that trick. This, is, yeah, this trick, 100%. Mm-hmm. Chad? Trick. Oh, yeah. Trick retains. Trick's got to retain. I'd be very surprised if Sean fucking Spears is an NXT world champion. If all ego Ethan Page comes out of nowhere after just losing and losing and then becomes an <laughs> NXT world. Which, Ethan Page... Isn't the worst option of a world champion? Not at all. Because they need they need a credible heel world champion for Trick to keep you know coming back to. But it's just this ain't the time for Trick to lose. This ain't the time for Javon Evans to win because he hasn't been booked like a winner. <laughs> um, although he is the most over guy on the roster at this point. Yeah, I just think Trick needs another win and just keep bulldozing him down. Listen, outside of Jey Uso, Trick Williams' entrance is the best entrance in WWE. Yeah, definitely <laughs> exciting. Yeah. Who knew hustle? Who knew whoop? It, who knew whoop that trick hustle and flows little thing would would be alive and well in 2024? <laughs> but here we are. Here we are. Also going on, uh, the NXT Women's Champion Roxanne is going to defend against Lola Vice in the battle of apparently who's the best Latina in NXT, which is what it seems like this rivalry has come down to. <laughs> Such a hot match! Oh my god, I can't wait to watch that match. <laughs> I don't know if you're serious or not, if that's totally being sarcastic. No, he's, no, he's very serious. I'm just going to sit there with my screen oh, okay, yeah. and just fucking salivated both these beautiful women wrestling <laughs> each other. I can't wait. Make it the main event. Ooh, this could main Chavo. event. This could main event. That is heat wave for you, ladies and gentlemen. Roxanne and Lola Vice in a main event for the women's title sounds like a fucking heat wave. <laughs> yep. Especially after that, didn't she? I think Lola gave Roxanne a ridiculous spinning back fist last week. Uh, that was that looked fucking hopeless. I ain't even gonna lie. That, that looked. Hopeless. It's. I think the fact that Lola sold it like a laugh, I think, was like what I was like. What the fuck was this? Like, what is going on here? Like, why is she laughing? She just laughed it off. I don't know who I want to go with this. Here's my thing. I think Roxanne retains because I I don't trust Lola yet. That's Likewise. that's my thing. That's that's my thing with Rox. I think Roxanne retains because I don't trust Lola yet. Like she's getting better. She's getting better. And when she leans more into her MMA yes. background, she looks fantastic. Um this ain't an MMA Unfortunately, match. it's not an MMA match. Uh and so I think she, she's gonna get you know, I mean she she won like the uh the, the con their, their version of money in the bank last year and she lost her little cash in. I think she's gonna lose again. I just don't see her winning. It'd be a shock if Roxanne drops to me. That's what I'm going. Well, who do you got for this? Uh, Roxanne. Look at her. She's cute as a button. <laughs> she is. Did she turn 20? <laughs> she didn't turn 21 yet, did she? I think she's like, what, still 20? Nah, she's definitely overage now. Well, overage is 18. I know that, but like. <laughs> she's definitely overage. Can she, can she go to a bar and drink alcohol is what I want to know. <laughs> she's, gotta, she's like 24 now at this point. She's got to be 24. <laughs> I, I, let's hope. Uh, let's hope. Ayo, did you say Ro- we didn't get you? Ayo, did you see uh, Roxanne or Lola? I think, 
No, uh, yeah, I'm going Roxy, and I think they did all right with Lola as far as giving her credibility. You know, she beat Shayna. She's she's credible as somebody you know knows how to fight, but she's not world championship material yet. Yeah. So, Roxanne retains. Not yet. Yeah. Moving on to Rock. what is probably going to be another annihilation because Wesley has a has a wish to become injured again. Obafemi, the monster, yep, dead, going <laughs> die, monster. That is Obafemi he's, going up against gonna Wesley, and as long as Obafemi has that title, I will never say he's going to lose that title. So I'm going with Obafemi. Chad Law, who do you got? This is tough. Wesley needs a win. This one-on-one -on -one match was inevitable. It's crazy that, like, Javon Evans showed up and just, like, took Wesley's whole fucking... Took his gimmick. Mind. Took his gimmick. <laughs> his whole gimmick, his momentum, <laughs> his moveset. <laughs> The excitement, <laughs> everything, to the point where he's in the main event of the pay per view <laughs> and Wesley isn't. Like it's, it's like it's almost like they're gonna end up a tag team in the in, in typical WWE strange bedfellow. Oh, they, they so are. They there. so are. And then he's gonna in throw him through months. the barbershop window. Yep. And that's how Wesley goes here. <laughs> so like, yeah, they will be tag team champions eventually, but. It's tough for me to call, man. Oba doesn't need to lose anytime soon. I think he could have an extensive reign as North American champion. He could have the Keith Lee double title reign, crazy enough, and, like, nobody would even think twice. You yeah. Know what I mean? like, Just don't have the Keith Lee hairline, know, please. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't have the Keith Lee gut either. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, just, I think it's going to have to be – it's going to be Oba. I think Oba is going to just knock Wesley down um in a convincing fashion wesley's gonna put up a hell of a fight a lot of close near falls but i just think oba femi just bulldozes through wesley and wesley goes to the back of the line fair enough fretzel mania is saying javon pressed c left and no mercy and then turned into wesley <laughs> <laughs> nice. yeah. so there's that yeah. <laughs> yeah uh yeah oba femi's oba, oba femi's a monster He's the he's the best built monster. He's what Braun what Braun Strowman wanted to be. Him and Dijak could have fed him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is what the fucking internet wrestling community would have yeah. wanted to talk to. Uh, I, I can't wait till Dijak runs mad on the Indies, which he's just started doing. <laughs> Yo, I can't wait till Japan. Dijak is Go facing Kyle O'Reilly on Rampage. Stop, oh, God. Don't, God, stop, stop giving Kyle O'Reilly press. Please. please. <laughs> cool, Kyle. Stop. stop. Cool, Kyle. Kyle O'Reilly. <laughs> Rampage. This Friday. Cool. Kyle. Oh, my God. Moving on. We have the NXT North American Women's Championship in our, her first legit title offense on a pay-per-view. Mrs. Carmelo Hayes, or Miss Carmelo Hayes at this point, not married just yet. Uh, Kalani Jordan, the NXT North American Women's Champion, going up against Sol Ruka with the craziest rendition of an RKO you have ever seen on TV. Uh, a, I've seen it. It's not yes, it was Soul Snatcher, which is... A hell of a name for a finisher. <laughs> yeah. It's a hell of a name for a No player. complaints there. No complaints there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, every time no I hear it, I'm like, who that. came up with this? I also feel like it's an HBK thing. HBK is still HBK, even though his eyes go different ways. HBK is still, he's still Sean in there. Sean is still Sean, <laughs> yeah. man. That's, that's, that's heartbreak. That's heartbreak so hicking bottom right there. <laughs> There's always a, there's some I, sunny days when Sol Ruka's around. <laughs> <laughs> always. Listen, that video that he did with Sexy Red and Jordan Grace was amazing. You heard she got arrested like before her appearance at the last pay per view or something? Yeah, she was in Newark. It's what things happen in Newark, New what Jersey. Again? What you gonna do? Fucking hilarious. <laughs> Gangster. <laughs> That's part of going to New Jersey is leaving. Hey, whoa, whoa, hey. <laughs> and she whoa, was trying whoa, to hey. leave. And she was trying to leave. And she got held up. That's my, that's my <laughs> state, man. I love this state. It's your adopted state. Shut <laughs> that's up. That's my adopted state. You're, it's fair. You're from Massachusetts. Yeah, my, my, oh. my, my roots are here, though. My dad's from here. Yeah, his his real name is Clarence. Anywho, um, so. <laughs> <A> private school. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. Listen, it's her first title defense. You can't hot potato a brand new North American championship. This isn't a hardcore title. Yeah. So Kalani, this is going to be a fun match. They're both crazy athletic. Kalani is a gymnast. Sol Ruka just does crazy things, and she surps, apparently. Um, 
This is just going to be a wild, fun, ridiculously athletic match. Probably the best women match we've seen. It's probably going to trump anything we saw in Forbidden Door, to be completely honest with you. Uh, but yeah, Kalani Jordan's going to win. It's her first title defense. If this was the end of the summer, I'd say Soul Ruka takes it. Like, if this is August, yeah. instead of right now, you know, I'd say Soul Ruka takes it. But yeah, Kalani just won a title. She's not losing right now. Yeah, absolutely. Shot law. Yep. I didn't want Kalani to be champion to begin with. Facts. I think this is her sinker. I wanted Fallon to win. Jada Parker, Jada Parker should have been the champion. Jada hold those in the whole competition the whole summer. I think that's the next up for Kalani, and I think that's who does take the title from Kalani because it ain't going to be sold. Not if Mia Yim has a not if Mia Yim has a uh, has a thing to say with it. Because that is brutal. Mishin. Mia Yim. I'm not calling her Mishin. <laughs> Mia Yim can't find a win out of a fucking paper bag. So like, I don't know, man. Like Mia Yim won't stand a chance against anything, yo. She does there's no way. There's there's no way she stands a chance against anything in any division at any point in time. We will we will this is we will see what happens. All right. Final match of our of our Money in the Bank weekend in Toronto. Uh, the college that I probably would have gone to, Chase U, uh, Andre Chase and Duke Hudson, <laughs> defending <laughs> against Seth Rollins', Seth Rollins protege, uh, Nate Fraser, who pretty much is Seth Rollins' twin and uses all of Seth Rollins' moves, and Axiom, also formerly known as A-Kid, defending their titles against Chase U. Ah, uh, God, I do don't know what's going on with this, nor do I kind of care. It's like the one match of the week that I'm like, I don't care about this. That dude in front um, looks like uh, Heath Ledger. Not Heath Ledger, Heath. Heath Ledger. What the fuck's that guy? Heath, what's his name? Heath, Heath Slater. 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 <laughs> Heath Slater? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Heath Slater, Matt Riddle, pick, a, pick an interchangeable fucking ball. <laughs> it looks like that. It looks like a surfer. Yeah. I will, I will say this, uh, as I'm just going to be a toss-up. I... I used to watch Andre Chase when he was Harlem Bravado at Evolve, and I remember hating this guy. And then all of a sudden he showed up and he was Andre Chase, and he became this Bob Knight parody, and he became fucking hysterical to me. It's a great way of looking at it. <laughs> he was a parody of Bob Knight. I'm like, this motherfucker is insane and absolutely hysterical. And ever since then, I've been sold on the comedy ridiculous as that is Chase you and you added Thea Hale and all of that randomness is going on. And I just I love Chase U for no reason whatsoever, and I'm just gonna go with Chase U because I just think they're per they're a perfect comedy act for NXT. Chase U, absolutely yeah. are gonna win the belts. I think Chase U, this is their time. I'm not sure if they've won the belts already and then like lost. They won quickly. once. Yes, so I think they win it back again because Axiom and Nathan Frazier have already had a run with the belts that have been pretty much. Cool high spot matches, nothing really memorable, and a floundering tag team division. So why not just make the crowd pop? There's going to be no title changes, so I think this will be the one of the mm -hmm. night that is a title. Yeah. Also, Fresh Andre Chase, Chase Andre Chase has a great has a great shoe game. And I just love Thea Hale. Like I'm just a Thea Hale. Mark, Thea so Hale is hysterical. So Did you? And I just want to see more <laughs> Thea Hale. So like I just want to see her bounce around in Daisy Dukes when they win. So like give me give me that. Ooh, give me that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did you see the video segment a couple or the backstage segment a couple weeks ago on NXT where they're all arguing and then Thea Hal just runs and goes, Everybody shut the fuck up right now. <laughs> yes. I love Thea Hale, man. Like more Thea Hill, bro. Please. She is she is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. National Ayo, who you got? How long have uh, Nathan Frazier and Axiom been champs? Since uh takeover. Too long. Not takeover, I mean uh stand and deliver. Sorry. Stand and deliver, yeah. Ooh, no, I would go chase you. Just freshen it up. Yeah. Plain, well, simple, to straight to the point. Freshen well, it up. Shock, who you got? Uh, chase you. All right, yeah, chase you. Also, Clean sweet. Yeah. Chase you has a great NXT, NXT uh, worthy chant in the give me the C H A S U. What does it spell, chase you? It's only going to work in NXT. Mm -hmm. Only going to work there. <laughs> Unfortunately. That's fine. It gives Duke Hudson something true. to do. That's true. Um, and that's why that's why that's why I love them. Like NXT needs to have a Chase U section in every arena they go. Like you know, you have Judges oh, Corner in Yankee Stadium. We need a Chase U student section <laughs> all, day, <laughs> all day, every day. That's, that's funny. I, like I would be in the Chase U section at every NXT event for no reason. Street team, <laughs> street team, Chase U street team, <laughs> all day, every day. Oh, 
<laughs> Any of it, folks. That is what the card is, what we know so far for NXT Heat Wave. Same thing as before. We're going to start with you, Chad Law. How good is this show going to be? One crown being the worst thing ever or 10 crowns being the greatest show of all time? Calm seven. <laughs> I like that. Nothing outstanding. Nothing jumping out the gym. Nothing that's like riling us up. Like, oh my God, memorable moment. New day, new new superstar. Like, it's just going to be. That was a good pay per view. Like, yeah. Good. I like yeah. Like, that, that's it. That's what I get from like most <laughs> NXT pay per views. Like, that was cool. Fair that was enough. AO, who do you got? I mean, how much, how well do you think it's going to be? Five and a half. It's about average. Oof. Oof. It's about average. It's kind of what I get from NXT. I'm not an avid NXT watcher as it is. I think it's hit or miss a lot. Mm-hmm. But remembering that this is still developmental, it, you have to kind of judge it on its own, own curve. So, yeah. But yeah, five and a half, I think is fair. Fair enough. Will Tarashock? Uh, six. All right. I am going to go seven. I'm going to go seven. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, I think I don't see there's not a bad yeah. match that's gonna happen. I show. think the range of expectations is right where it is, so that if we do get something that exceeds a little bit above average, then we have something to talk mm-hmm. about, you know. But I think they're, they're kind of gonna do what we expect them to do. It's gonna be all right. This can easily, and I say easily, turn into a nine if Sean Spears comes out as Ty Dillinger. <laughs> easily oh turn God. into a nine. Okay. Perfect 10 with his shoulders to the mat for three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, ah. yeah. I think Javon Evans will have the highlight of the night. I'd say. I oh, absolutely. I he will have the moment of the night that we're like, holy shit, this kid is like. Well, he's 19. He... Poor Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Wesley. 19 and has no fear. That's pretty much what it is. Poor Wesley. Yeah. He just, he just got his whole gimmick stolen. Um, imagine if Ricochet was still around. Anywho, uh, that's pretty much all we have this week for Kings of the Rings podcast. We went through Money in the Bank. Uh, we we closed the Forbidden Door. Thank fucking God. And and we did NXT Heatwave. I want to thank our two guest hosts from the Ringside Club, A.O. Baker and Chad Law, for joining us on the show. You guys were excellent fun. We are definitely going to do this again and probably multiple iterations because we, honestly i feel like we can talk about this for another three hours or so but some of us have work in the morning unfortunately so, so i'll give you guys both some time to plug your stuff let's start with you a.o baker plug whatever you want to do right now yeah man uh speaking of wrestling i do my show the signature move which is also a part of the ringside club channel Whenever the fuck I feel like doing it. It might be one this week, might be one next week. Who knows? But, of course, every Thursday night, 9.05 live, we are live. Uh, the Ringside Club, you can follow us at theringsideclub.com. All the socials are there. Every way that you can subscribe is right there. Follow me at I M A O Baker, And uh, don't call me unless you got a check involved. I mean, <laughs> I, like I like that. Chad Law, I like that. what you got? What up, though? It's the kid, C-H-A-D-L-A-W, Young Godava himself, the former RSC Predictions Heavyweight Champion, looking to get my belt back this weekend, Lord willing. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Over here, just, just having our forbidden door right now, you know what I'm saying? Much love to the fellas over here at the King of the Rings podcast for featuring us. Uh, you know, I got that law take on the Ringside Club website where I just give my rundown of every show of all the wrestling shows going on. Y'all can check my reviews out, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the blog gods. Uh, pick up that Elijah Rosario EP, Sacred Summers, the new UFO Fever and Fredro Star album called Strap. Pick that up right now. Um, grab some Ringside Club merch. Grab some uh, some cups. Grab some shirts. Grab some hoodies. You know what I mean? The RingsideClub.com. Log on. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. And fellas, we appreciate y'all for having us at Ringside tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, sir. All right. So it's almost time to get out of here. We're going to do some fun stuff on the post show real quick, real quick. But, Will, without further ado, cue that music. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 382, Money for the Marks, the 2024 edition, along with our good friends at the Ringside Club. I've been your host, King Ricky Rose. You can find me at Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, some people's DMs, less people's text messages at Ambassador Biggs. Find Kings of the Rings podcast at K-O-T-R underscore podcast across all social media outlets. Like, share, subscribe, leave us five-star reviews, buy some 
of our merch. The links to all of that are in the description below. If you are listening to us, listen to us, please, on Wrestle Addict Radio, the cure for the common wrestling podcast network. And follow Wrestle Addict Radio socials at addict underscore wrestle on Twitter because I refuse to fucking call it X. And at Wrestle Addict Radio, all one word, everywhere else. The links to all of that are in the description below. It's been a crazy Crazy, crazy prediction show. We went through money in the bank. We closed the forbidden door. We talked about NXT Heat Wave and all of that. Mostly is happening up in the six, the the funeral ground of Drake happening this weekend. Will Tereshock. You know, I changed my mind. I'm switching back to Seth Rollins. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with Damian Priest. It's just, it's just been that kind of night, ladies and gentlemen. I tried to cash in and I forgot my briefcase, apparently. That is a good real fact. That's he was, he was debating that 47 minutes. Ago. He was just like, just <laughs> yep. He was really just thinking like, about yep, it. Like, maybe I should go. I think it. Seth <laughs> Rollins is going to take it. I don't know, man. I still don't know whether to get you this set up. The main question is I ordered pizza or wings. So that is, Ooh. that is a question Ooh. for wings. the wings. post show. Wings. I was Go thinking wings. Of wings. wings. I was yeah. thinking of wings. I'm probably going to do wings. But yeah, that's all I got this week. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. It's been a lot of fun. Yes, Appreciate folks. y'all for having us. Obviously, when we come back next week, folks, we are going to break down money in the bank. We're going to break down NXT Heat Wave. We probably won't break down NXT Heat Wave, if I'm being completely honest with you. And then we have, uh. <laughs> then we have actually an extended, like, Four week break until we got to talk about something else. And that something else will probably be SummerSlam. So sit back, relax, enjoy the ride that is going to be going up in the six. Hopefully Rick Ross doesn't get jumped again. But until next week, folks, Fuck Rick Ross. goodbye. Good oh, night. We'll see you soon. And of course, never cash in on this guy. Fuck you, Slack. We'll see you next week. This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.